Rising nearly 400 feet above the desert floor in a remote section of New Mexico within ancient Anasazi territory is a place named Chaco Canyon and within stands an imposing natural structure called Fajada Butte. Hidden from the world for over 700 years along a precarious narrow ledge, there lay a secret, ancient, astronomical observatory. Subsequently given the name Sun Dagger, and the reason why is nothing less than remarkable. It has been revealed that for more than a thousand years, the Sun Dagger has been revealing to all aware of its creation the subtle changing of the seasons. In 1977, it was thankfully rediscovered when rock art and petroglyphs were spotted nearby. Anna Sofer, who was cataloging the rock art, was one morning greeted by the Sun Dagger, slowly traveling across the wall, traversing the strange spiral patterns which were etched upon them. The intelligent Anna realized that the Sun Dagger could have been connected to the petroglyphs, so along with her colleagues, she came back at various dates throughout the year, eventually establishing the following information. On the summer solstice, the Sun Dagger appears near the top of the largest spiral, and over a period of 18 minutes it slices through the very center, cutting the spiral in half before leaving it in shadow for another year. On the winter solstice, two daggers of light appear lasting for 49 minutes, during which they frame the large spiral. Finally, an equally fascinating and more complex light show occurs on the spring and autumn equinoxes. The large spiral is carved in such a way that counting from the center outward to the right, there are nine grooves. On each equinox, a dagger of light appears that cuts through the spiral on different angles. Meanwhile, a second dagger slices through the center of the smaller spiral. These light shows, which had been going on for centuries, continued for several years after their rediscovery. However, in 1989, it was found that the granite slabs had shifted. The alignments that had been arranged so carefully were no more. It also seems impossible for us modern people to realign them as all attempts have failed. Was this sun dagger really made by the Anasazi Indians? Or was it a far older surviving relic, one that they were merely aware of? a relic which has unfortunately eroded away. Similar ancient light displays marking the solstices and equinoxes can be found at other locations as well, such as in the southwestern United States and Mexico. In a ruin in Hovenweep National Monument, near the borders of Utah and Colorado, light beams also illuminate spiral petroglyphs on the summer solstice. At Burrow Flats in Southern California, a winter solstice sun points a finger of light to the center of five concentric rings in an early Chumash rock art display. Were these monuments once used by a lost, ancient advanced group of marauders as calendar sites while traveling America? Perhaps one day we will know for sure. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Beit Sherim is an ancient cemetery located within Galilee. Very close by is a natural cave. It had apparently fallen into disuse at the end of the 4th century and filled up partially with 4 or 5 feet of clay-like silt. In 1956, a bulldozer was taken in to clear the rubble, but what it would uncover can be seen as an enormous upart, an out-of-place artifact. It turned out to be a large ancient rectangular slab made from an unknown material. Because of its size, measuring 6.5 by 11 feet long, 18 inches thick and weighing in at over 9 tons, it was not surprisingly left where it lay. With a perfectly level surface, its origins were a mystery, yet alas, at the time, not a pressing one. However, in 1963, members of a joint expedition of the Corning Museum of Glass and the University of Missouri would bring to light a curious reality. While surveying the region for possible remains of ancient glass factories, Someone suggested that the Bet Sharim slab might have been made of glass. A suggestion initially perceived as a joke. Amazingly, chemical analysis was indeed carried out, confirming that this enormous and extremely ancient slab was indeed made of glass. It is therefore believed that the Bet Sharim slab is a huge piece of first stage glass, meant to have been broken up and fashioned into objects somewhere else that for some reason was abandoned right where it was made. In conclusion, several factors surrounding the existence of the slab are currently unexplainable. 
According to mainstream views surrounding the evolution of glassmaking, the production of such an enormous base material would have been simply impossible, requiring over 12 tons of raw materials, over 20 tons of furnace fuel, the maintaining of a temperature of over 1100 degrees centigrade for no less than five continuous days, finally producing a nine-ton slab of perfectly level, perfectly rectangular glass, clearly demonstrates the requirement of a highly advanced refinery with highly advanced technologies harnessed by a past civilization. Additionally, at the time of its discovery, only two other pieces of glass have ever been created that are larger. Both rest within the enormous telescopic mirrors of machines developed within the past century. It seems clear to us that the Beth Sharim slab is one of those rare gems that clearly demonstrates the past existence of a highly advanced highly capable ancient civilization that once lived and was unfortunately lost here on Earth. Cave paintings and petroglyphs are undoubtedly some of the oldest and most interesting artworks found anywhere on Earth. Some of these artworks found within the unforgiving terrain of the great outback within Australia, for example, have been dated at well over 10,000 years old. Illustrations in ochre that show many of the animals our distant ancestors loved or hunted, along with many other forms of artistic recreation. Like a time capsule allowing us to travel back, to peek into the minds of ancient man. Although these ancient artworks are undoubtedly important to our understanding of ancient man, there exists a number of other petroglyphs that are considerably different to these primitive achievements. Found within the White Mountain of Wyoming, there are a number of petroglyphic carvings that were seemingly made with nothing else than our ancestors' hands. These deep-set handprints were somehow left within solid sandstone, as if created by softening the rocks with their minds, hands, or perhaps voices alone. How did an ancient people manage to create these marks? Did our ancient ancestors somehow figure out how to soften stone? There are many sites all around the world which possess similarly enigmatic marks. Were they left by individuals capable of softening stone, or perhaps left upon the stones while not fully formed? To melt or soften stone requires immense heat that which is usually only found within the center of the earth, or indeed the lava flows which spew forth from its core. One interesting theory regarding the possible softening of stones, created far back within antiquity, was initially discovered still been surviving within the minds of locals who surround the ancient sites of Peru, most notably Sacsayhuaman. A theory put forth to explain the shaping of stones within the fortress, regarded as a local legend by the first explorers of these sites. Percy Fawcett, as well as Hiram Bingham, who actually rediscovered Machu Picchu, noted that it was a liquid derived from plants, which was apparently known to the ancients to turn stone soft. In fact, in 1983, a Catholic priest attested to using the technique, actually achieving the softening of solid stones, although he was apparently unable to return the resulting flurry back to solid stone. Furthermore, according to other researchers, Jan Peter de Jong, Christopher Jordan, and Jesus Gamera, among others, ancient walls within Cusco show evidence that ancient cultures used very high temperatures to shape them. This unknown process vitrified the surface of the blocks, turning them to glass. Based on these observations, Zhang, Jordan, and Gomera speculated that ancient man possessed an advanced device which somehow allowed them to melt stone blocks. And although the petroglyphs of the White Mountains are yet to be fully studied by anyone, we feel they are probably the strongest piece of evidence of this lost process. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. 
Modern technologies have enabled man to peek into the past like never before. Numerous discoveries have thus far been made, many of which, as we predicted, continue to reinforce our posit of past civilizations being once far older, greater in occurrence, and some in size and indeed technological prowess than currently academically stated, notably expanding recognized scales of many of these ancient cities. We believe these often remarkably ingeniously laid out settlements, now buried under millennia of strata, were sometimes either partly re-inhabited leaving later relics, or simply have surviving sections piercing the ground strata, foliage, and tree levels. Guatemala, a perfect example of this. Submerged beneath impenetrable forest, yet dotted with towers once argued as separate ruins, built in honor of various things, now realized thanks to LIDAR as one once enormous mega-metropolis. Furthermore, this ancient claimed Mayan site, amazingly, does not hold the title for possessing the largest single ancient structure, possibly on Earth. Although buried under several meters of Earth, LIDAR has revealed the site as Eguadar Phoenix, a structure of astonishing proportions has been found, scanned, and measured. Discovered to be over 4,500 feet long and 50 feet in height, the platform of its roof alone would have taken a stunning expanse of space, and the research being undertaken to understand yet another mega-metropolis which surrounded the structure are finally forcing an overdue change in long-held, stubborn, ignorant, and to us, long-opposed paradigms regarding who, when, and indeed how ancient people accomplished such achievements. Researchers stated, quote, Aguada Phoenix is by far the most sprawling ruin, end quote. They continued, In fact, after three years of study, we have determined that it's by far the largest and very probably the oldest Maya structure ever found in Mexico. These quotes, however, raise some curious questions, although the research thankfully transparent in nature, sharing the incredible discovery with the world, if indeed the oldest structure ever found, one has to remember it is also one of the most incredibly massive and clearly one of the most complex architecturally constructed structure as well. The question, how is this logical? We feel a contradictory statement unless one perceives the past as our channel argues it once was. We will keep you posted on the discovery. We find it highly compelling.